Want to learn all about the pros and cons of rechargeable battery hearing aid technology? Then you need to watch this episode of The Dr. Cliff Show. Hey guys, welcome back to The Dr. Cliff Show. I'm Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And I am joined once again today on the show with my co-host, Dr. Rachel Cook and Dr. Kelsey Beck. Welcome back to the show. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So um, today we're talking all about rechargeable hearing aid technology, pros and cons of it, what different manufacturers are, are doing when it comes to rechargeable devices, because not all of them are done exactly the same way. Um, before we get started, I'd really like to kind of like go back in the history of rechargeable hearing aids. Um, I remember back when I was in grad school, I was actually my fourth year externship, so this would have been 2015 or so. Um, I, ha I saw my first pair of rechargeable hearing aids. They were, uh, uh, well, not Signia, they were Siemens because it hadn't yet been sold, uh, the company. Sure. And so there were Siemens rechargeable devices and they were actually nickel metal hydride battery technology. So you would actually have you know battery doors that would open and close. They would only work with the rechargeable version of these batteries, and it was very hard to tell these batteries from a regular disposable yeah, they battery. Look identical. Mm -hmm. So if you ever took out the battery and you had other batteries on your desk anywhere, you'd be like, hmm, which one of these yeah. are actually rechargeable? I mean, or at not? least you know like. If you picked up the wrong one, it's not going to work, you know? That's true, that's <laughs> yeah. true. Uh, the only problem was is that I had a patient who had dead batteries, but they wanted to, for some reason, keep the dead ones and get replacement ones in them. So we were able to order them replacements. And they weren't, they weren't like dead dead. They were out of battery, okay? Mm -hmm. And they, they still would give them a couple hours of charge so they could charge them every couple of hours and get use out of them. And I had taken them out and I didn't even realize this because I was, I was a student and, and no one had ever really, this is the first time I've ever seen a freaking mm -hmm. rechargeable hearing yeah. aid. And so I, I can essentially, I ended up throwing it in the trash. I had to dig around in the trash to find that rechargeable battery that had no charge in it. Yeah. And it ended up, I could see very subtle differences between that battery and a disposable battery. Yeah. So that was my first experience ever with rechargeable. And I'm like, this rechargeable thing's not going to go I well. was going to say, yeah, no. yeah, that's not a good first experience as you're digging in the trash. Like, I'm never doing this again. Ever again, <laughs> ever again. So valuable learning experience. But uh, shortly after that, I want to say within a year after that, there was a company called Z Power that actually came out with a silver zinc battery. And uh, the that actually looked like, it, it was called silver zinc, but it had a gold plate on yeah. it mm -hmm. to Very control the actually. like, current or something mm -hmm. with the battery because it was interchangeable with the disposable battery, which was crazy. I remember going to a conference, the ADA conference in 2016, and, and this was out in California and they had a booth and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. But I remember thinking to myself, and I, you guys already know this, is that um, I was extremely cautious when it came to that particular battery technology because it was so new. And one thing you guys know about me that maybe some other people know about me is that I'm a very late adopter when it comes to new technologies, especially mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016, sure. you know, a good eight years ago. Um, I still had a, a flip phone at the time and uh, in 2016 as an audiologist uh, at that point. And um, I just remember being like, ah, I want to see how this plays out. And so how, how did that play out? Uh, it wasn't great. Not so it, well. It wasn't great. So in theory, fantastic. I still have patients today asking me, why don't they come out with a hearing aid that can use both, a rechargeable and mm -hmm. a disposable? And I'm like, great question. Let me tell you why not. Um, Let's but, just sit down, kids. Let me yeah. tell you the story <laughs> about back, back in my day. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think um, when we were talking earlier, we were bringing up this idea, you know, it's really difficult for hearing aid manufacturers to take a new type of technology like rechargeable, it takes time to refine it. And even with disposable battery technology, it took time to get it there. So when you take a device that has both, um, this idea of kind of switching out the battery doors and retrofitting the device to have either a disposable battery door or a rechargeable battery door, you're just introducing a lot of new parts and a lot of new problems. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened um, very quickly. The companies that came out with Z-powered devices found out that they were having exorbitantly high repair rates on these devices. And ultimately, each of these companies ended up replacing these devices with just fully rechargeable hearing aids once they became available because 
the whole thing went so poorly mm -hmm. that yeah. they said, we have to fix this because now people will never use our company again. Well, I think it was a really interesting idea because I remember being at the conference and they're like, oh, okay, so like, let's say the Oticon open hearing aids were really new mm -hmm. when this all happened. It's like, oh, you can actually take off the disposable battery door off of the Oticon hearing aid. You can retrofit this new battery door that we've created with our silver zinc batteries and it will essentially give you a really good, actually gave you pretty good battery life. You yeah. could get through the whole day mm -hmm. on one of these batteries. The problem is that they would fail mm -hmm. so often. And you're like, okay, well, now it's not even charging anymore mm -hmm. and you're a month into using it. Like you said, it happens so often that people are like, can I just like go back Yep. to my other hearing aids. Now, it started off as a retrofit, then they actually started getting contracts with manufacturers to be like, okay, let's actually build your okay. hearing aids mm -hmm. with this technology. Still ran into the same issues mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, I will say that it is really nice that the companies who did adopt it really early on, they did try to make it right by all of their users um, by really either replacing their devices or, you know, they really tried, they made it really easy to just get new devices because it was on their part. They're like, yeah, no, we messed this up. This is not great. And yeah. so I think that that's a really awesome example too of, you know, the companies doing right by people as well. So I think that's very important to highlight. And I think that Z Power, it was actually really impressive. I got to be a part of a, you know, where they, uh, companies will fly audiologists out and they'll do like, a, what do they call like that? Focus group? Like a focus group yeah. kind of thing. And they're like, okay, tell us the, the problems that you see, like what things could you, what would benefit you as a clinician inside of your offices. Oh, I bet you never got invited back. <laughs> and uh, well, <laughs> um, yeah, because they didn't actually continue on in the hearing aid industry for much longer after that. I think that they, they were very open and receptive to our mm -hmm. feedback. They really wanted to make it work. You could tell that they were like, they, they really wanted this to be a thing where people could go rechargeable. You know, it's better mm -hmm. for the planet if you can go rechargeable mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, it just it just didn't pan out. I want to say I had about uh, 7,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel when I went out there uh, for that. And I had talked about that technology on the channel before uh, and how it maybe didn't go so well. Mm -hmm. um, but they were very open and receptive. I still know a number of audiologists who were a part of that focus group as well. And everyone was giving brutally honest yeah. feedback for that. But I think it eventually got to the point where they realized that this wasn't sustainable. The hearing aid manufacturers were like, you know, what? we're just going to like pull this in house so we can have complete control over quality assurance and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, and that was really kind of when lithium technology was starting to take off as well, which is kind of the next iteration of, of rechargeable. So I will say there are still Z power batteries out there in the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, the company itself actually ended up going bankrupt, out of business, I don't know how to they, word they it. They pivoted, they actually Pivot. went okay. there. I, I wanna say that there's a lot of like Bose devices that are out that? there that are using that technology. And I'm not 100% sure about this, but the Bose Sleep Buds 2, uh, they didn't come out with a newer version of that, but those were using a Z Power developed battery because it gives you good battery life and it's safe, right? Yeah. A lot of people freak out about lithium and mm -hmm. catching yeah. fire and stuff like right. that, which actually happened in my hometown. There was a factory that was like storing lithium oh, batteries and it went up in flames. Yeah. But uh, so from a safety perspective, Bose like that because people are going to be sleeping in those. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they brought it back. And now there's another startup company that's basically creating devices that look exactly like the Bose Sleep Buds too that might also be using that technology. I'm not sure. Well, I had a patient actually call literally last week asking, where can I find a Z Power battery for Probably my Probably eBay for like eBay? 200 bucks a battery. It's like 300 bucks oh, a battery well, there you now. Go. Um, and they said, can you believe it? And I said, yeah, I can believe it. Um, they have been wiped essentially mm -hmm. off of the consumer market, if you will. Um, but if you think about it, if that came out in 2016 or so, and we're just now hitting 2024, if we always say that the average lifespan on hearing aids is between five and seven years, then it definitely makes sense that there are still some people out there that are using the devices that can go back and forth, but it's a very small number of individuals. Yeah, and those rechargeable batteries, even going back to nickel metal hydride, it was kind of like a understood that every year you just need to replace it mm -hmm. because you'll start off with, I remember the nickel metal hydride was like 11 hours of battery life a day. And then by the end of the year, you'd be at like eight hours a day. And so you'd replace it, get mm -hmm. back up to the 11, because right. every time that you recharge it and, and deplete it, that, that 
you know, costs a cycle and it depletes the, the life, overall life of the battery. Um, and same, obviously, issues with the, the silver zinc technology mm -hmm. is that it depletes. Uh, we still have the same issue with uh, lithium batteries. Now, lithium batteries don't have this memory to where, like, you need to only deplete it a certain amount or deplete it all the way before you mm -hmm. recharge it. We don't have to worry about that stuff. But at the same time, you end up going three years with the lithium battery and you might have had 24 hours of battery life when you first started and now you're down to like you know 12 or, or 15 hours of battery yeah. life so and, and to be fair if you're down to 12 15 hours of battery life for a lot of people that's like the time they're awake and so they're still getting all day use out of it maybe every now and again if they have like a really long day they come home shower for dinner or what have you they you know put their hearing aids in the charger for a little bit you get the rest mm -hmm. of the day anyway so i mean even still just talking about from 2016 to now you know having to replace them every year now we're in 2024 you know having to go every three years maybe replacing the battery like that's a huge jump and a huge pretty jump. short yeah. amount of time from a technology standpoint for sure and i guess we can what thank uh, tesla for that i don't know yeah, i mean mm -hmm. lithium is around a lot longer than what tesla yeah. has been but but um, that really has been the technology that has taken off. We're probably going to see more advancements in the rechargeable battery uh, category. But, you know, you start looking at like lifespan of hearing aids to your point is that Phonak actually rates their batteries for six years. They say that if you use this consistently every day, this battery will last you six years. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen like like that happen because when did they first release they were the phonak audio belong devices mm -hmm, yeah. came in rechargeable that was i'm guessing around 2017 or so and so now we're basically at year seven but pretty much everybody upgrades their technology yeah before six years anyway yeah i guess it's difficult to say yeah i and i think too that you know the reason a lot of people upgrade is because every couple of generations from a hearing perspective there is a big enough difference where you're actually going to notice how you're hearing differently and so you might not even get to that you know seven year time frame because well maybe it just makes sense to do it sooner because the right. technology on from the nut from you know other perspectives uh, gets so much better too yeah um and even still uh, i mean you can still always anytime that like you send devices in for repair let's say even if it's not the battery a lot of times they'll just replace all of the yeah. internal components right. anyway um and so sometimes you even get a new battery on accident right because even that's though that's not what was supposed to be being fixed um, so I don't know either that I've seen one that hasn't been replaced prior to that yeah. because for they, some reason it's yeah, probably just easier for them to you know pop out all the components, oh, yeah. put in new components, and be good to go, or Absolutely. just replace the unit entirely, which mm -hmm. we've seen happen. Yeah, the time it would take to actually go through and diagnose the true problem in mm -hmm. every single hearing aid that's being sent in for repair, even if it's outlined in the repair form of you know it's creating static, and I know it's coming from the microphone because the speaker's fine but the microphone's not or whatever it mm -hmm. may be still they're not going to risk sending it back and not having that problem corrected and mm -hmm. having it sent back again and again so yeah what do we see on most of our invoices when we get it back from repair electronics replaced mm -hmm. components replaced uh yeah you know. electronics and housing replaced i'm like isn't that the whole hearing that's the whole, that's whole thing, thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many more parts than that, right? but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. So, okay, of course, now we're primarily on to lithium battery technology. I'm trying to think off the top of my head if there's any other technologies out there right now rechargeable they even exist and nickel metal hydride is pretty much gone mm -hmm. uh, silver zinc pretty much gone unless you're paying 300 bucks for a battery yep. uh, online and I know it has gold in it but it ain't $300 <laughs> worth of gold I can no. tell you that um, so we're pretty much all on lithium but there's different ways that different manufacturers will actually implement the charging of their lithium batteries yeah um, we have uh, the contact charging which are like the metal contacts that make physical contact inside of a charger case to give it a charge and you have inductive charging charging, which is essentially wireless charging where, where you don't have any contacts that, to get the charge into the, the battery. And then I guess kind of like a quasi form of contact charging would be the galvanic charging that Signia yeah. is known for. Uh, and it seems to have gotten them better battery life. Uh, but there are pros and cons of these different forms of charging. Oh, definitely. Contact charging for sure that we first saw like with the Belong Audeo devices, the Marvels, and even moving into the Paradise devices. Um, you know, when they have to make contact, it's really important that the placement of these devices in the charger is correct and appropriate. And what we found, especially with, I'm just gonna name off the Phonak devices, was that uh, with those first couple iterations of the charger, it was really difficult to get them back 
out mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the charger. Um, I remember working at the VA with many, many veteran patients who, you know, didn't always have the best dexterity and half the time they were able to get them in without a problem, but getting them out, I mean, you had to hold the charger with one hand, rock the hearing aid forward with the other and then pull at the same time. Mm -hmm. And for uh, many people, that was, that was way too much. So one of the disadvantages of the contact charging was the fact that you had to have this perfect placement and get good contact or they weren't going to charge appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and to your point as well, um, even today, like people will come back in with their devices and say, oh, like every now and then it just it's just not charged in the morning. Like it's flashing red and it's like, did it start flashing mm -hmm. red once you adjust it trying to get it out? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, mm. so what actually was in the charger overnight and it just, may, whenever you do put it in, just make sure that it is in fact flashing yeah. one of those mm -hmm. lights at you before you close the lid. That way you don't wake up with that challenge. Yep. Um, same thing with contacts as well as that if there's any dirt or debris on those contacts, whether it's on the hearing aid or inside the charger itself, that will also um, uh, not allow you to charge the hearing aid fully. And so oftentimes I'll still have patients bring their chargers in yeah. so that I can take a look at it and make sure that if there is anything that's building up that we get it cleaned out. Yeah, yeah, that actually brings up a great point. If you are experiencing any sort of issues with your hearing aid charging um, or perhaps just not charging reliably in the way that you would like, make sure you take your charger to your provider's office with you. Please, 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 because mm -hmm. so often I hear something happened with my hearing aid battery and I'm like, okay, great. Can I take a look at your charger? Oh, I don't have it. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know if that's the problem or not now. Mm -hmm. So see you again tomorrow. That's um, right. So yeah. bring them with you. And, you know, uh, we've all had the case of where someone brings their charger in. They're like, I don't know why it's not charging in here. And it's like, and you look down inside and like, what, what are some things that you guys have found inside of charger cases? <laughs> Unmentionables. I don't even want to. No. I was literally, I think I, I think so it was like part of a Dorito potato chip that I saw. <laughs> Not shocking. It, yeah. I did find a bug inside somebody's mouth. Like it had gotten squished on the contact. Oh. Um, that was Perfect. that's probably the most interesting thing that I found. But really, moreover, is that you know, um, I also have found that you know a lot of people don't always clean their hearing aids uh, as effectively as they're supposed to. Whether that's you know they weren't taught how to do it or or whatever. There's a number of reasons that hearing aids don't get cleaned. But every time you don't clean the devices and you put them in the same box over and over, day after day, year after year, yeah. things do get inside the charger. And I don't, and I think that too, we just don't think about the charger as being something that needs to be maintained. Right. And it does. Yeah, yeah definitely absolutely. does. So that's for contact charging. We also have the inductive charging. Now, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Phonak specifically again, is that they have the life version of their Audeo hearing aids that do not use battery contacts. You just put it inside the charger, use inductive charging uses inductive charging to charge up the device and and that poses an additional benefit potentially that uh, you don't have these exposed metal contacts that aren't going to get dirty mm -hmm. uh, you also have one less ingress or point for uh, moisture into the mm -hmm. hearing aid which makes the life hearing aids extremely waterproof as well mm -hmm. yeah definitely i also think that there's the advantage that um, most of them have this kind of magnetic aspect to them where it's really, really easy to drop them in the charger and pull them back out of the charger. There's really no major points of resistance, but that can also cause some problems too because there are not any points of resistance. What can happen sometimes in some of the chargers where they lift? Yeah, so um, I had someone who uh, was trying to charge their battery a little bit later in the afternoon because one of those really long days um, had stuck the charger with the inductive charging in her purse and it had gone sideways. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And so the hearing aids were actually just squealing and running their battery down further. So she actually couldn't make it through her like, it was a work meeting after hours. Uh -huh. um, uh, it was like a, like a mm. dinner thing. And she's like, I couldn't hear a single thing that any of my colleagues were telling me the entire evening because uh. It just got a little bit sideways inside her purse. Now, of course, this probably doesn't happen very often, right? But um, it always it does happens happen. when you don't when want you it to happen. Exactly. Them. So it's the worst possible moment. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. crummy. So we, uh, so we have receiver and canal technology that uses either contact charging or inductive charging. We've already talked about Phonak here a little bit. Um, uh, we've talked a little bit about Signia because they're doing more of the contact galvanic charging and their battery life is, is really, really high. In really fact, uh, their new Silk device that is uh, completely in the canal, pretty much invisible device is now rechargeable. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be huge when they first were, were announcing the release of it. Mm -hmm. And then I get a pair to review and I'm like, 
holy cow, these things are tiny. Mm -hmm. Size. And so how do they get like 24 hours of battery life inside of that tiny little hearing aid? I hope whoever figured that out makes a lot of money. It's <laughs> ma it's ma yeah. I wish them it's very well. <laughs> it's, it's just magic. It's, that's it what really it is. is yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, so we have that from them. They also have non-contact charging, so they use inductive charging, but it's for their custom in-the-ear devices mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's pretty common that we're seeing across a couple of different manufacturers now, like Resound and Signia, both have custom in-the-ear hearing aids that use non-contact inductive charging. With the cool, um, Signia's is not a custom kind of cradle for the device, but Resound's is a yeah. custom cradle mm -hmm. for for the hearing aid. Which so is like guarantees that your positioning of that's mm -hmm. gonna be good. It has to be perfect. Yeah. yeah. Which, is, which was difficult with the Signia non custom charging cradles. You really had to get it right in the right yeah. spot. Mm -hmm. And if something were to move or shift, it, it would stop charging. One of the more pioneering companies on the rechargeable custom technology was Starkey. Mm -hmm. But they chose to go the contact charging route, uh, which it was actually pretty easy because they had these like little magnetic posts that would stick up. You put the hearing aid on it and it would automatically like the orient easiest. itself the right way. What I like about that too is that it makes removal from the case really easy. Super um, simple. With, with the Resound ones, even though there's one way that they go in the charger, I have had a lot of people struggle to get them back out because it is such a perfect fit. How do you in. get the grip to get it back out of there? That is true. Um, but with the Starkey ones, because it's just this itty bitty little post that sticks up and it's a magnet, you can use your entire hand essentially. Oh, yeah. um, and there's no limitations to getting it back out of the charger. And so I do like that feature from them as well because a lot of the times with the rechargeable in the ears, I do utilize that a lot for those with dexterity challenges. Um, and so having something that's really easy to remove from the from the case is uh, very beneficial in that Not way. to mention left and right doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, posts yep. can, can hold either one and, and that is not true for, mm -hmm. I'd say 99% of chargers, you need to be in the right positioning, right? Up until um, the point where you try to then put the left one in the right ear and then you come back to me saying, man, I've, you know, I was, <laughs> the, I feel like these fit, but now I don't feel like they're fitting and then they have them backwards. <laughs> yeah. That is totally yeah, true. That'll, that'll mess you up. <laughs> that is, that is true. You know, and I would say though with Starkey is that you have these uh, exposed gold metal contacts that are facing outward on the mm -hmm. face plate. Mm -hmm. So it, sometimes you kind of look at it and you're like, man, that's just kind of like waving to someone say, hey, look at me. There's mm -hmm. something in my ear, yeah. Yeah. come investigate, right. which is fine. I mean, there, I guess there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but for people who like really don't want to draw attention to mm -hmm. them, um, it's you have to go through, I don't know how many conversations a day of like, oh, that's my hearing aid. It mm -hmm. has contact charging and people are probably be like, oh wow, like that's pretty cool. You have a rechargeable, you know, custom in the mm -hmm. ear hearing aid, but maybe only we find that to be interesting. Most people probably do not care at all. Right. Yeah, I feel like I run into that a lot where I think something's super cool and oh. everyone's just like, that is a very niche thing to be excited about, but yeah. I'm so glad that you're so happy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for enjoying my <laughs> yeah. joy. But what I do like too about these, you know, these three manufacturers we've talked about is that they do actually have a rechargeable option for the completely, for like the in-the-ear devices, whereas most others do not have um, an actual rechargeable we'll see device. It. I it's, hope it's coming. So. We will. So here's, here's my issue, is that it seems like a company either chooses, we're going all in, yeah. We do all rechargeable, yeah. or a company being like, nah, we're gonna hold off, all disposable. Yeah. And I'm like, why do we have to be all or nothing? I know. Yeah. Why can't we like have a version of a disposable? Because like, there are pros and cons. As, as much as people hate to admit it, there are pros and cons. One thing that I've had a real big issue with, with uh, Phonak from the receiver and canal devices is that they don't have a disposable battery option of the newest mm -hmm. Lumity line. And it drives me freaking crazy because I, I can't tell you uh, 2023 was the year that I dispensed mo the most previous generation devices because I, I needed, needed for a patient disposable battery technology. Yeah. You talk about doing cross transmission where it chews up battery life to do that. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna use the rechargeable version of those cross transmitters, you're getting 11 hours, best case scenario mm -hmm. with that. And for people who wear their hearing aids 14, 15, 16 hours a day, you just can't do that. No, yeah, it doesn't it's not cut it. Not gonna work. I just dispensed some paradises this week mm -hmm. um, because I had to, because it was a cross type of a setup with a receiver and canal, a power loss, very interested in streaming, very interested in connectivity, and had a very unreliable um, schedule day to day with traveling. What are they to do? I can't mm -hmm. put them in a rechargeable product. Especially not that their new charger doesn't have the additional power pack mm -hmm. that offers wireless kind of on-the-go charging. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's not available either unless you go with the lifes. So uh, yeah, it's been interesting having to go back a previous generation. Normally, we wouldn't ever find the need to do that, but we're, our hands are kind of tied right now. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too, is that, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the rechargeable hearing aids, but the chargers also need to be upgraded for several reasons. The first of which is that there are manufacturers just by default where your charger actually stores additional charges in it, just like you said, so that you don't have to have it plugged into the wall all of the time. Like my patient, you can stick it in your purse and give it a couple extra, you know, minutes of charge while you're driving to your next location or whatever that piece is for you. Whereas some companies, it's like, nope, always has to be plugged into the wall. And I just feel like the on-the-go charging just has to start make, being a standard. It has to because we see it in all of the Apple products. Mm -hmm. um, it's becoming kind of a like a, a standard in the consumer side of things. The Apple products for sure with the AirPods and things, you know, you can always take those on the go with you. I think Signia made a huge push with most of their rechargeable products to include that charging capacity within their chargers to take them on the go. They've done it with the stilettos. They've now done it with the silks. They've done it um, with the pures, the yeah. pures all, all of them. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming a standard in the industry and they're gonna have to catch up somehow, whether that be an additional add-on or, or something, it has to happen. Yeah, and while we're on the topic, and here's the thing, I have a little bit of a bone to pick, and uh, <laughs> yeah. this, is, I, this is gonna get turned into a YouTube short, so here's the thing. Um, everyone knows I love Phonak, I love their technology. The biggest problem that I see is that their charger cases are too small so to small. not only not have the ability to have a power, like internal power bank, for them, but if you're doing custom ear molds, which the vast majority of Phonak hearing aids that I fit are with custom ear molds, it yep. just makes the performance of their hearing aids much better. Oh, yeah. And it is actually a differentiator, in my opinion, of their technology versus most of the other brands that are out there. But you have to make the charger big enough to fit the freaking ear mold yeah. inside of it. Like, if, if you need me to come out there and be a, a focus group of one, I'll show you exactly what you need to do to make those charging mm -hmm. cases work for your amazing technology. Mm -hmm. But right now, it literally is driving me freaking oh, yeah. crazy because I'm trying to fit people with these custom molds and I'm literally having to go back a generation in the charger case just so I can fit their custom ear molds inside of it. And it's not rated for the newer technology, but I'm like, you know what? We don't have a freaking option for you oh. unless I switch you to a different brand, which I'm sure Phonic would not enjoy me doing. Yeah. Oh, you can make this a focus group of two, probably three. a focus group of three. We'll um, grab Dr. Balderas, the whole group is focus group of four, and every other patient that I've had that has broken an ear mold trying to close that list. Mm. Seriously. Uh, I think, like you said, when you make one of the best custom ear molds on the market, like mm -hmm. we know this, Phonak makes such a good custom ear mold, and then you make a charger that doesn't fit it, I'm like, where did we go wrong? Mm -hmm. What happened in the development process? Did you not try them out with any of your custom ear molds because you make a heck of an ear mold? Mm -hmm. I need, like, these are the things that drive audiologists and providers nuts. Extra nuts. It just, it seems like such a simple thing. Yeah. You know, and it, why, why is it the simple thing? Like, because they, they probably do way complex things. Obviously, sure. they do that are like, oh, that's unbelievable how complex that is. I never would have thought of that. Mm -hmm. But like literally the first thing on the first day of fitting someone with a custom ear mold that I'm trying to fit it into the charger case ease, it's like, hmm, that doesn't actually fit in there. And it's like playing Tetris. And again, you know, if you have even the slightest bit of a dexterity issue, like playing Tetris with your ear molds every day is not fun. Then the advice is then we'll leave it open, but then you know, what if you have like dogs and cats that like to knock things off of your nightstand while they're charging? Mm -hmm. And then you get a hearing aid eaten. And, and I'm telling you that story because it has happened it where because happen. you could, they could not close the lid on their charger because it didn't fit and they didn't want to break their ear mold, dog ate the hearing aid. Yeah. You know, this it, that can be incredibly dangerous. Like <laughs> any anything, a uh, person or animal eating a battery is dangerous Not a to good do, move. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to make your technology, and the, you have to make sure that the user experience meets up with the, you know, the technology mm -hmm. that you're you're creating and developing. So if they release, an, I might have to boycott. If they release another charger that does not have an internal power bank and more importantly cannot fit a custom ear mold with a canal lock on it, okay? Yeah. So I'm not talking like you know, a, a dome or or just a regular in the canal ear mold with no canal lock, no skeleton lock, like it has to be able to accommodate everything that you could do with their hearing. And if it doesn't, 
what the heck are we going to do? Yeah, I don't care about the fancy, flashy features if the core needs that my patients have to simply recharge their devices are not being met. Don't move forward with another development on something, you know, tap control's great. Oh, you know what? Your mom's going to hate me for uh -oh. saying this. Oh boy. But, but we can scrap tap control or we can push Ooh. it a, we can push it a little bit further to make sure that the charger works right, you know? Like, let's start with core basics mm -hmm. and then add the flashy. Mom, she does not mean that, okay? I, She's, I, mean I don't know what's in her coffee love. this morning. I want, does she have ear molds? Uh, no, she doesn't. Well, no. then she wouldn't know. <laughs> her hearing aids fit fine in the charger. So Also pretty sure she doesn't have the Lumides either. No, no. she has Paradise She has still. Paradise, yeah. so she's still got the nice... I'm a bad son. Also, oh, she's got a combi previous charger. charger. She yeah. does. So she's got yeah. the... She's living the high life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. As soon as she upgrades right. and as soon as she needs custom ear molds, <laughs> we can have she this will be like, Cliff, right, here's the deal. Cliff. Cliff. <laughs> I'm gonna, Mom, I'm fitting you with custom ear molds next on Lumity devices. Perfect. Uh, and I'm going to get you a charger case ease, and we'll see. We'll let my mom be the focus group of <laughs> that. See, and they should. They should bring patients in who've worn them for a while, been there through a couple of generations, and been like, do you like the, the new charger or not, and why? Well, and that's the thing, too, is that like I think that there has been a push to make the hearing aids really, really small. And so, you know, making the chargers also mm -hmm. small and, like, all of those things, I think that there was a push for that. But if you just like made it like a little bit bigger, like a little bit wider, and then even just like a little bit taller to put that little extra charge power in it so that you could take it on the go. I mean, totally. this is a very simple problem to fix. Well, you know, you were mentioning that Apple's ruined it because <laughs> the my AirPods Pro case, it, mm -hmm. you guys both have AirPods yep. as well, the, the actual case is tiny and it has a charge. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I can't tell you how many patients come back after the first week and be like, uh, there's something wrong with this, this uh, rechargeable case. I'm like, well, what's wrong? It's like, well, it's not holding a charge. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, I know it's even bigger than the Apple AirPods case that you have and that yep. you use for streaming a different media before you got your hearing aids, but it does not have an internal uh, battery mm -hmm. inside of it. No, it's, um, it's also missing the wireless charging aspect of being able to take the charger and put it on a charging pad. Ooh. Which Signia has. Yeah, that's like, again, so cool. Signia has branded a lot of their chargers to look just like Apple products, mm -hmm. and I think it works. Um, they are, you can lay them flat on charging pads and there's the wireless inductive charging there. Um, they do hold internal charges like, and they're also white glossy cases that mm -hmm. look just like AirPod cases. So I don't know if they're gonna get in trouble for branding their stuff that way, but they definitely had it in mind of, we need to make sure that these charging cases act, operate, and look just like every other consumer electronic mm -hmm. charging case. And that was a really smart move, yeah. in my opinion. I think too that as the tech generations start to age, start to lose their hearing, you know, I think that that's going to be something that will hugely shift is because th those generations will have um, more demands as far as what their technology can do because oh, yeah. we've been spoiled. Yep. Um, you know, we've had every 100%. new thing and and we're, you know, used to getting new and latest and greatest and updated and updated and updated, you know, that's going to start being a huge demand in the hearing aid space. Totally. And I sympathize with the hearing aid manufacturers. They have a very niche market. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going after hundreds of millions of people mm -hmm. like app. I mean, Apple's AirPod division uh, is, I can't even tell you how many X times larger than the entire hearing aid market. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, Easy. it's it's massively ridiculous how much money Apple makes on these products. So they can they have R and D out to wazoo, and they have <laughs> unlimited funds to do it. And hearing aid manufacturers spend hundreds of millions of dollars on developing these technologies, but that's not even close to what Apple can commit to developing something that is a one size fits all for everybody mm -hmm. with a mass market of essentially everybody. It's considering too that um, within the hearing aid space, you not only have to dedicate funds uh, to the look, the aesthetic, the use of the devices, but also people want their hearing aids to function better in spaces. So you also have to put a lot of more research and development into the performance and how someone is actually going to hear with your device and that Apple doesn't have to do. They just have to make the product sound good uh, when you connect it to your phone or your iPad or whatever it is and have a nice battery life. Yeah, direct audio streaming all they have is to do. Yeah. so easy compared mm -hmm. to hearing aid technology. But the other double-edged sword of that too is that we will often say, you know, we got to make the hearing aids, you know, look more modern, act more modern with the wireless charging, the uh, portable charger cases and all this stuff. 
we got to appeal to essentially a younger, more spoiled market to get them on board. And then as soon as they do some of these things, we're like, you think our older patients can handle this? No way. They can't put them in this charger case. There's no way. Like when uh, I'm, I'm thinking when Phonak came out with their Saru Shield disc, right? Oh, look at this cool disc. It's going to be an easier way to change wax guards. And we're like, what were you thinking? Give me and the match sticks. Give me the sticks back, you know? It's like, it's kind of that idea of like, you know, you're... You're kind of screwed if you do, and you're screwed if you don't, right? Yeah, that's like right. It's a, Our job is to never be happy and satisfied yeah. with everything. We should always be pushing forward. If we if we're not acting this way, they would come out with this is just the hearing aid, yeah. and that's what everyone mm -hmm. gets. I don't. Who cares if you like it or not? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we'll we'll come out with the new one in 20 years, and I hope you like it here right now. And this you is know, an like, interesting point because without nickel metal hydride battery technology, without silver, the things that we learned from that, the yeah, things mm -hmm. that we learned from silver zinc, we are not at the point where we're at right now with rechargeable battery technology mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen and we talk about this with other hearing aid features as well is that you need to go through generations of learning of what to do what not to do and eventually you get to the point where when you learn from all of the mistakes and the things that went well you can actually develop stuff that is better not mm -hmm. to mention that we're not even talking a decade yet like when rechargeable batteries came out to now we're still two three years shy of a full decade of this technology being on the market in the hearing aid space. So yeah, we'll, we'll give them some time, I guess, but I'm just sitting here. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested, like when they Impatiently first, waiting. Yeah. When they came out with the first Model T Ford, like <laughs> how much better was it 10 years after they first came out with it? Maybe it was a lot, I don't know, because hearing aid advancement in the last 10 years has just been crazy. Oh, and really. it's about to be significantly more crazy. Yeah as AI starts jumping on board with every single one of these manufacturers, not even AI within the actual hearing aids, but think of the AI that's being used to develop the yeah. new hearing aids. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's gonna move faster than we've ever seen it. Yeah, and if they can figure out ways to, even if you don't improve the battery technology, which in some hearing aids you're getting up, what, 51 hours of battery yeah. life on a single charge, if you can figure out power saving ways, you don't even have to improve the battery technology mm -hmm. and you can improve the battery life mm -hmm. of the hearing aids just by processing uh, sound and, and information well, better. So I, I still think that they're in this world of rechargeable, clearly rechargeable is taking over. You have certain manufacturers going 100% in on it mm -hmm. and not even considering making disposable anything anymore if they can help it. Um, disposable batteries still make sense for a lot of people. Yes. Um, but you have to you know, say that rechargeable is probably going to be the way of the future yeah. um, you know manual dexterity with your fingers and, and whatnot and and just the convenience of not having to worry if you're gonna run out of batteries I think it's you know ten years from now we're probably saying like man let's let's break out some of those old uh, disposable battery hearing aids uh, well, out of the museum <laughs> yeah and do a little show and tell so the young bucks out there are like hey <laughs> you guys don't know this but Hearing aids used to have disposable yeah, batteries. Yeah, you used to have to actually take your battery out and put it and back. And take a little in, sticker you know. off of it to activate it, That's let it right. charge. Yeah. I bet you, if we all look really hard on our shoes, we could probably find are some of those stickers. Are you kidding me? They are all over every inch of mm -hmm. my life. Why do I pull out? Like, I'll pull out a bottle of hairspray on my cabinet at home, and it's got a hearing aid sticker on it. And I'm like, there's no way I don't even wear hearing aids. I but. found one on the bottom side of my husband's shoe. Actually, oh, um, he has not You're been to the office. Him with no, <laughs> seriously. So that's great. Just, they ha they end up everywhere. They well, really do. Awesome. <laughs> this has been a very interesting conversation. I feel like we kind of uh, got a little negative there on ba on rechargeable battery technology a little bit, but it's just because we we like it and yes, we, we want yes. to move it forward. Yeah. We see that it's the future, uh, and just hopefully some of the manufacturers are watching the podcast so they can get some good ideas. It's, a, it's the tough love. Th that's you know? right. That's right. So we wouldn't complain if we didn't care so much. That is right. so true. That is so true, <laughs> guys. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, make sure that you hit that like button and. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. And we will see you next time.